So you want to know how to use the list generate function to make API calls in Power Query? Well, this video has got you covered. And the same principles I'll be teaching, you can use for pagination. So more and more we're working with APIs. An API allows you to retrieve data from certain software. And every company can make their own API. So it's not like a standard programming language, but everybody builds their API in a way that has their own instructions. I'm going to show you a way on how we can retrieve data from the Pokey API. So have a look at my screen here. If you go to pokeyapi.co, you land on the page right here. And the Pokey API is a database with Pokemon, as it suggests. It has different instructions right here in how you can make API calls. Now, I don't want to make this too difficult, so let me just give you an example. If we copy a piece of code here, and there is an example showing exactly how we can make use of the API. I can retrieve data in our browser. So what's happening is I put in a certain URL and the URL has instructions in there. So with these instructions, I can give in a limit. So I want to see only the first 100 Pokemon and I can give in an offset. So basically, this API allows you to give a set of instructions, just like you give a set of instructions to a function in, for example, Power Query. You can adjust these variables as well. So perhaps you don't want to see 100, but you change it to 10. And now you only see 10 of 10 of these Pokemon. The result of this right here, that's a, a JSON document. And this JSON file, we can actually import into Power Query and they will rec and Power Query recognizes this and you can make use of that. So for an example, we see this first line and Bulbasaur is the first Pokemon. It also says Pokemon 1. Then it goes to Pokemon number 2, which is Ivasaur and Venusaur. Now we're going to exploit this to see if we can make these API calls in Power Query. And as you can see here, we have a limit of 10. We can even make this a limit of 100 and you can just change this as you like. One more thing I'd like to show, the offset shows you if you want to retrieve the first values or if you want to skip a few. So now we have the first 100, but if we put an offset of 100 right here, then it skips the first 100 and then retrieves another 100. So let's make use of this. So in Power Query, to make an API call or to retrieve some value from a URL, you go to queries, right click, new query, and you click on from web. Now this from web functionality is fantastic because you can paste the URL here and Power Query will by itself have a quick look on what it's grasping from the internet. So is it looking at SharePoint? Is it perhaps looking for a JSON document? And it will try to apply uh, the right function to retrieve the data. Now the call that we just did, this is the result of that. So you see all, all kinds of steps have been taken and the result is the Pokemon from the request. I would like to go to the first step first. If we have a look at this tab, what you can find is that Power Query recognized that we have a JSON document first. So that's this part. It's a web contents request. And the part right here is the URL that we've input. That's all that we need to make a simple request. And with this request, you get the results from the database. The result of this request is a part here that looks like this. And this is the representation of a record in Power Query. So our record shows there is 1118 Pokemon in the API. Our current request is the one at the top. And it's mentioning that our previous request was probably this here. And our next request will be this one. The everything that's been put down here will make it a bit easier to make the request. So you can reference that if you wanted to. Now, lastly, there is the list. And this list is a list of records with the Pokemon that we need. Now, one thing I want to show you before we go on is that you can reference any of the any of these columns within the records. So let's say you want to get the, the URL from the previous. You can have this request, open a, a square bracket and just write the word previous. And with that, it will actually return you only the column that was called previous. And you can do that as well for results, which was the one that contained the list with all of the records. That's enough for now. So let me remove this. 
Now, to make this interesting, we are going to have to call our, we have to, we have to request our API calls multiple times because for the exercise now, I only want to retrieve 100 Pokemon per request and I want to make those requests up until the point that there is no more data in the database. So in this case, we see there's 1118, but I would like Power Query to find it out themselves, which you could in the future use for pagination as well or to not hard code any numbers anyway. So to get started, we delete all of these steps after, and we just use the template as we have it. And I would like to turn this into a function because instead of putting an offset here hard coded, I would like the function to be able to use a, var uh, a value that changes. So to make this into a function, let's just change the query first, calling it get Pokemon. And then you can go to the advanced editor where you see all of the code. And all the way at the beginning, you can write uh, opening and closing bracket and equal and one of these bigger signs. And then what I wanna do is instead of hard code the offset, put a variable here. Now the variable in your function, you can put in the front. So we could write offset. And then instead of hard coding this here, we will take the text, we will write an ampersand and then input the, uh, the offset that we will have as a variable. But we need to have this as text because the whole, uh, the whole URL needs to be a string. So you can write number to text and put the offset right there. Okay, that's all we need. By doing this, our uh, URL request or our request here is turned into the function that we need. Let's test it. So we just had an offset of something. So we can, uh, we can have an offset of zero to start with. Now this gives us a request that uh, has no previous, but you can also change that offset to 200, for example, and you will see that the list changes and you can adjust it in that way. Okay. Now, now things are getting interesting. Let's first have a look at list generate. List generate is the function we're going to use to make our API calls. So you can go to new query, blank query. And we're gonna build this up from scratch. So a list generate function as a first argument always needs uh, an initial value, the value to start the sequence with that we're going to make. So we'll build up to the API, but first we're going to make a sequence that starts from zero. Now, the second argument from list generate shows that uh, you can create a series as long as a function is, uh, the, the, the condition in the function is satisfied. So we could write each of the values we create needs to be smaller or equal to 300. Now we still need to indicate what the function needs to do to create the series. So we've now seen, uh, we've now seen the starting value. We've seen the condition that needs to be true. And as a third argument, we could now write that each of the steps in the series should increase the value by 100. There we go. Okay, so this is in this very basic what list generate does. So we have the value to start with, which is the value here. We have a value, uh, we, we have a condition that needs to be true. So as long as this condition is true, a new value is generated. And the new value generated is the bottom one. So each value is increased by 100 until it reaches 300. So our next step is to make sure we can use multiple columns or multiple variables for list generate. And the easiest way to do that is by using records. How can we transform the current series into a record with optionally multiple columns? Let's make a record with a, one co a single column first. So our initial starting value, it could be a record, which we indicate by an opening bracket. And this opening bracket could be called, uh, it, it includes the column called offset. Now, instead of saying that each value needs to be smaller or equal than 300, we now need to mention the, the name of the, uh, of the column in the record. So each offset needs to be smaller or equal to 300. And also here, we're going to increase this. So the offset is equal to the offset plus 100. So it's a different way of writing things, but in essence, this should be the same. Now, if you look at the record, we still start at zero, then it goes to 100, 200, and 300. Notice in this example 
that for each of the steps we take, our uh, our column name first is written without any curly brackets. So this curly bracket is only referencing the complete uh, variable that we have here. And after assigning a value to this, you do have to put the curly brackets right here. So it's saying our offset is the existing offset plus 100. And the next value it generates is again the offset that I created plus 100. Let's continue from here. So now we know how to make uh, to use list generate to get two uh, to, to get a single record here. But now we want to see two different columns for this. So our offset is zero. And now we want to see that Pokemon could be a value called a and we need to include that in the in the generation as well. So our Pokemon value equals Pokemon. So now when we have a look at the records that we made, our first record has a value, uh, a column with the, the, the offset value of zero and a, and a column with the Pokemon value of A. And if you go down, the A remains the same, but the offset increases. So this is let's generate with two columns. Now we're not looking to return the value A for each of the records. Instead, we wanna use the offset and apply it to the function that we already had. And as we had looked at earlier, if we have an offset of zero, we can invoke the function and you can input the offset just as you like. So if you make it 100, it also changes. I'm quickly showing this because if we go back here, we already know that the offset that we have created is zero on the first one, 100 on the next, 200 on the next. So what we will do now is input that value of the generated list to each uh, to, to the function in each of the each of the steps. So going back up here, instead of referencing a, we're now going to say, all right, I want to get the uh, fn get Pokemon function. And the first time I retrieve it, I want to offset it by zero steps. And here we go. Well, let's put this on 100. So our first record should then show the result of our function with zero as a result. Now, we already know how that we create an offset that increases with every step. And with every step, we also want the Pokemon value to actually use the fn get Pokemon. And instead of having a hard coded value, we wanted to use the offset that increases with every step. Very well. So we have an offset and we need to close our brackets right here. So our first uh, offset now uh, is 100, the second one 200 and 300, but we don't have much to see on the Pokemon value here. Instead of returning both of these columns, we can also say in the fourth argument, I only want to return the Pokemon record. So even though under the hood, the offset is still used, we can only return Pokemon. And this returns our records. Now let's expand this to see if things are going well, because this is not everything in our data set, but this is just a test. So to inspect this, you can click on two table. Okay. And our first record is right there. I'll click on it and then click on the list. And then change this again to a list. And now if we just expand this to being a record. So what we can see is that our first record has Bulbasaur as Pokemon 1. And it goes up to and including 100 records. Now if you go back here, we could also have a look at the second record. And we create a list. And as we can see, that first value in the record starts at 101. And this is exactly what we need. If this is providing you any value so far, like the video, and we will continue with the example to see how we can build this in a more structured way. As you could just see, we have just created three records, but the only thing that's missing now is that we have hard coded this. So we have said we only want the first 300 record. Uh, and we, if, we, if you like to, you could make this the first 1500. So now this will keep on going and you see that we get all these records up to 1500 records in a row. Now there's something wrong. As you might remember, we only have 1118 records in the database. 
So if I would click on this record right here, and I would click on the list, you will find that the list is empty. So we made a request to get the, uh, the, the 1500 to 1600 Pokemon, but it doesn't exist in the database. So we need to do something to make sure that Power Query can first check whether there's any values and only if there's still values to return our uh, request. We can easily do that. So, so far as we build up, the offset is hard coded, but we can actually check out if, uh, if our list contains any values. So for that, it's good to know that our record has a column called results. And in the result column, you find a list. Our next step is to make sure that this list is not empty and actually contains the Pokemon. And to do that, we're going to change the second argument. So we could write, instead of seeing if the offset is here, so we could say like, we want to see a list is empty. And we want to check that on the Pokemon record. And within the Pokemon record, we want to check it for the results column. So you open another square bracket results. And instead of checking that it's empty, we want to make sure that it's not empty. So what have we done here so far? If we just have a look at the argument right here, what we're telling it to do is that you can run each of these steps. So you can increment the index and make your request, but only as long as the returning list in the results column from the Pokemon record, you can only do it as long as that list is not empty. And once it's empty, you stop your call. Now let's have a look at the returned records because this is a special moment. The returned amount of records is 12 of them. Each of those API calls can retrieve 100 Pokemon. And as you remember, we only had 1118 available in the database. So this is the result that we want. Power Query in each step checked whether there's values in the records. And in the last one right here, if you click on it, you can go to the list column and you find that there's 18 records. And this is the last one. And with that, you've made your API call and got all the Pokemon out of the database as you wanted. The index that we've used, you could also imagine that this is a page because some of the pages that you request might have a page number. So in my blog, if you go to the second page, it says the number two in the URL. So if you want to find all the blog posts I write, you could probably use the, the gorilla.bi website, retrieve each of those pages and get the header titles of each of the blog posts. So that works. Now I have a question for you guys, the question of the day. My question is, what do you use list generate for and how has it changed your way of working? What benefits does it have? I have some ways that I know, but I'd love to hear about yours in the comments. And if this was any valuable to you, make sure to subscribe to the channel to not miss out on future videos that I'll be releasing. Lots on Power Query, Power BI, and requests are also welcome as well. So leave those two if you like. That's all for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if there's anything you're curious about, let me know in the comments too, and I'll see you in the next video.